Hi, welcome back to my channel. Thank you for watching and for subscribing. And if you're just visiting, please consider subscribing. So today I want to share with you my opinion on some popular fragrances. And this is going to be an unpopular opinion because what I think about them is quite different than what majority of the people think about these fragrances. Now, I've done a number of videos on this topic before, but you know, there are some new ones uh, to talk about here. So I wanted to do another installment. And actually recently I saw a video that Jackie did um, on this topic and it kind of, together with a new release, both of these things kind of inspired me to do an updated list on my unpopular opinion. And let's start with the new release that uh, inspired this video. You know, I was going to do a separate video on this release and um, I changed my mind because, uh, yeah, I just didn't have much to say about it or I didn't have a lot of good things to say about it, which is quite different from majority of the reviews because it seems like majority are really loving this release. What am I talking about? I'm talking about the new Kayali collection. I guess not so new now. It came out probably a month or so ago. The wedding collection. So it consists of two fragrances, his and hers. Now, um, you know, you know my history with this brand. I, I think it is extremely overhyped. I don't think their fragrances are worth the hype. Not that they're bad, because majority of their fragrances are quite pleasant, but not much more than pleasant. Plus, all of them suffer with performance issues. At least that has been my experience. And so, you know, when the, these two came out, of course, I was very curious, but I didn't hold out a lot of hope. And I was right. So let's quickly go over these two. And I'm actually going to start with the one that I liked more, which is his Velvet Santal, the one that comes in a black bottle. So obviously both of these fragrances are supposed to be sandalwood uh, prominent or sandalwood heavy. Um, that is kind of the star note. Um, and this one, I will say, yes, it is definitely sandalwood prominent. You know, there's also a note of, uh, I think, green tea. There is jasmine. And I think there is some other woody notes. And, you know, this is pretty much what I get. I get really nice, creamy, smooth sandalwood with actually just a little bit of spiciness. I can't really say that I'm getting like, tea or jasmine no and i do get more woodiness so i can tell that it's it's more than just sandalwood you know uh, that's basically it. it's a really pretty scent definitely not uh masculine it is absolutely unisex in my opinion it's very light it's very simple it actually lasts a relatively long time but um projection is also almost non-existent from the beginning so it's very much a skin scent is it nice and pretty yes is it something exciting um is it something to write home about is it something unique is it something super performing no no and no and so for that reason i found it quite underwhelming okay now let's talk about the second fragrance in this release, which is the feminine fragrance, uh, Velvet Silk. Beautiful bottle, without a doubt. You know, uh, what is this fragrance about? Now, again, don't remember all the notes. I know there is, there are a lot of notes in, he, in here. There is um, champagne, uh, there is peach, or not peach, um, nectarine. I think it's nectarine, yes. Um, I think there are some sweetness in here, like, praline or something else with lots of other notes this one was completely disappointing to me i got nectarine a lot of 
nectarine and in this it was the most prominent scent it was like nice fruity juicy scent no real champagne sandalwood would only come out like in a very very deep dry dry down obviously sandalwood is one of the notes of course um yeah it would only come out in a very very deep dry down this fragrance disappears in like 10 minutes it doesn't last it doesn't project it's very again it's pretty these fragrances none of their fragrances are offensive you know they're very pretty it's a pretty scent but it's very you know body splash kind of scent so pretty but again extremely disappointing especially considering the performance do i see these as um wedding scents no not for me I would not want to smell like this, nor would I want my future husband to smell like this. I just think it's so, both of them are so uneventful. <laughs> so yeah, I I'm sorry. I, you know, no disrespect to Kayali. Uh, that's just my opinion. I think uh, she's lovely. Mona is lovely. Her marketing strategy is out of this world. Genius, absolute genius. Beautiful bottles inoffensive scents and yet these are the scents that i don't want to wear i don't want to have in my collection i found this release to be quite disappointing you know just like uh, a number of others from this brand unfortunately yeah that's my opinion and i know that's an unpopular opinion because i what i heard from majority of the people is that they're loving this release so you know maybe it is just me but for me, no, both of these were no. Um, what I actually forgot to mention at the beginning of this video is that there is actually going to be a little twist on this video at the end because I am not just going to talk about fragrances that don't work for me, that majority of others love, but also I'm going to talk about a few fragrances that go the other way around where majority of the reviews are quite negative on these fragrances, but I happen to love them. So stay until the end to hear about those, but for now, let's continue with a few that, you know, don't work for me, that others seem to love. And let's talk quickly about the next one because I have spoken about it in one other video already. And that is Bora Bora from Giardini di Toscana. You know, this uh, house kind of um, came uh, out of nowhere. Um, a lot of people are talking about this house. Obviously, the first fragrance uh, that I tried and heard about from them is Bianco Latte, which I absolutely love. And then Bora Bora came on the scene and a lot of people are talking about it. A lot of people are loving it. Of course, I needed to try it. And for me, no, I, I don't get it. This is a very heavily white floral scent. It's kind of this, supposed to be this kind of beachy scent and lotion scent, but uh, it's very much overpowered by white florals to my nose. They're so heavy. They're so heady. They're so headache inducing and they're just way, way too much, which make this fragrance quite unpleasant for me. So yeah, I know many people are loving it and maybe you have to love white florals to enjoy it. I don't know. But for me, as someone who doesn't enjoy white florals, this fragrance was just a big, big no. Another one um, that everyone seems to love that I just don't is Guidance from Amouage. I mean, what a stunning bottle. I wanted so much to love this fragrance. I really had high hopes. I, I want to find another Amouage that works for me because I've had sunshine for many years and that's it. <laughs> I haven't truly found another one that I loved that I really wanted to have in my collection. And when everyone was raving about this fragrance and it features a note of um, pear, which I love, I thought, yes, this is going to be a winner for me. And so I got a sample, I tried it and no, no, big no. Uh, there's definitely a pear in there. I think there is a, there's some kind of nuts in there, hazelnuts or something. And I find the combination of the two really, really strange. It just strange. It smells strange. And also the pear for me, especially in the opening, is um, quite sharp and screechy. 
yeah i don't know usually pear works for me i love this note but here very sharp very screechy and then in combination with these hazelnuts it just creates a strange combination again a fragrance that really gave me a headache and this one is a powerhouse it is so so strong it is so potent and i just couldn't i really tried i tried it i think three times and though every time i had exactly the same experience so unfortunately guidance from amash is not for me but i know that so so many people love it Next, let's talk about the fragrance that I've never talked about on my channel. And that is Tonka Zoo from Gallagher. Well, it's their sister brand, Pearlescent, but really owned by Gallagher. Now, when I found out about this fragrance, and especially when I started hearing reviews about it, I thought I am absolutely going to love it. This is a shoe in for me it's stunning i'm gonna read you the notes here because you gotta see how beautiful the notes are and how much up my alley they are there is blueberry champagne black currant tonka bean iris amber rose neroli jasmine musk patchouli sandalwood i mean blueberry champagne black currant tonka bean i mean okay this sounds amazing and you know, earlier in the year, um, Gallagher was having some kind of, I don't know, anniversary sale or some kind of sale. And I thought, yes, I'm going to blind buy it. There's no doubt I'm going to love it. And oh my God, <laughs> this was a disaster for me. Ooh, there is something. I mean, blueberry. It's not really blueberry. It's like some kind of blueberry compote or blueberry syrup or blueberry something like it's not really fresh berry that i'm getting but definitely in a blueberry category and what i got together with it and i don't know where it's coming from perhaps it's the neroli that ruins the scent for me i don't know but what i got was soap so much soap it was some kind of blueberry like soap it was terrible <laughs> The longer it sat on my skin, the more I couldn't stand it. It was, oh my God. And no, big, big no. And I think I'm the only one who, who doesn't like it because every single review that I've heard about this fragrance is very, very positive. Everyone seems to love this scent. And for me, it was a huge no, huge no. I Blueberry soap is what I got, which is really strange based on these notes. It should be amazing it should be this amazing sweet fruity bubbly kind of scent i think i even heard someone mention maybe i read it somewhere sort of making a comparison between this and rosé all day from gallagher and like no <laughs> there's nothing similar about these two fragrances i love rosé all day it's such an amazing scent and this was yeah, blueberry soap. Anyways, yeah, for me, this was a big, big no, and I really would not recommend blind buying it, even if you think the notes are right up your alley, because to me, the notes turned out to be quite deceiving. The fragrance smelled very different. Next, let's talk about a Zergia fragrance, you know, from a house that I absolutely love. And, you know, if you watched me, you might remember that I recently acquired Torino 21, which I think is a beautiful, beautiful summer freshie. And, you know, maybe, I don't know, last year, yeah, last year, Torino 22 came out. And, you know, I think majority of the reviews that I've heard about it are positive. And so I thought, well, I'm loving Torino 21. I got to try Torino 22 as well. Now, when I looked at the notes, I knew they were iffy for me, but uh, a lot of people of Fragrantica actually compare it to Baccarat Rouge 540 or even the X-Tray version, which I like so much more than the original. And some people say it's this really nice, warm, kind of sweet, slightly spicy scent. And I thought, hmm, I, I think I might love it. I want to try it. So I got a sample, I tried it, and at first, when I applied it on, and you know, I had the same experience multiple times when I tested it, 
at first when I apply it on, it's quite pleasant. It's it's really like people describe it. It's this warm, slightly spicy um, type of scent. Is it similar to Baccarat Rouge? Very, very distant connection between them. Uh, some hints of it, but really, I would say they're different. Overall, they're different. And if you like both scents, it's very justifiable to have both, you know? So initially, really nice. But when it starts drying down, there is something in it that comes out that bothers me so much. And the longer it sits on my skin, the more it bothers me. And I think it is eucalyptus. I really don't get along with this note. And it is present in another Zergio fragrance that I tried that also many people love. I think, if I remember correctly, it's a, a Cento Overdose. I think. I could be wrong. But I know it's a very popular scent that I've tried in the past. And it also didn't work for me because of this note. And it comes out really strongly here as well. It gives it slight, like medicinal vibe that's how i pick up eucalyptus and it really ruins the scent for me it be became quite annoying i had to wash it off every single time that i tested it so unfortunately for me torino 22 is a no but again majority of the reviews that i heard about it are quite positive so sample it you might enjoy it okay and now i want to share with you two fragrances that um, can also be called having an unpopular opinion uh, and that is because I love them but I haven't heard very positive reviews about them. Now the first one I think this is my second year owning this fragrance and that is Windflowers from Creed. Uh, yeah this really didn't get very good reviews when it came out and even now, uh, I don't hear a lot of people talk about this fragrance. Now, this is a shocker that I love this scent because it is very, very heavily white floral. I mean, there's jasmine in here. There is tuberose in here. There, there is, I think, orange blossom in here. I know there is some sweetness in here as well. There is like praline. Um, there is some musk. Um, you know, a few other notes. But definitely, definitely, it is white floral heavy. And beside white florals, there are other florals in here as well, like maybe rose, maybe some other florals. I don't remember. But somehow, this combination of white florals is not heady for me. It's not overpowering. Um, probably jasmine is the most prominent of the white, white florals, but maybe it's everything else that kind of softens it and helps it. I don't know. But it's so nice it's so feminine it's so pretty it's kind of this sexy white floral scent it's very airy at the same time like i think having the wind uh, and i don't know if wind flowers have some kind of meaning behind it or if it's really wind flowers i don't know but having the 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 title wind in it actually really makes sense because to me it's a very breathable very airy type of scent and yeah even though it got bad reviews i'm really glad that i sampled it because i love the scent it's one of my favorite favorite white floral fragrances and the second one is actually a newer fragrance in my collection i have not shown it in a hole yet i acquired it maybe a month or so ago and that is Candy from Thomas Kosmola. Now, this is kind of, I think, a flanker of his uh, number four, La, Pla La Pre Amour, which I do have. And that number four is really a fragrance that's very similar to Baccarat Rouge, although, you know, it has its own nuances, but it is somewhat similar. And um, yeah, when this one came out, I thought, well, slightly, maybe slightly juvenile, but kind of pretty bottle. And I really, really want to try this fragrance. I don't know why. It just really kind of attracted me to it. And, um, you know, the reviews of it are so-so. But based on the notes, I decided that I really wanted to try it. Why? Because the notes look so juicy and delicious. There are red berries, cherry. There is a uh, raspberry uh, bloom. Uh, there is cotton candy, vanilla caramel. I don't know, something else. I mean, the notes sound amazing, right? And 
I am so glad I tried this because it is really this delicious, super delicious, juicy scent with a hint of Baccarat Rouge in it. But still, the, the dominating part are these really, really sweet, juicy fruits. So I do get like, I don't know, is it separately cherry, red fruits, whatever? No, it's just a lot of red berries and fruits with a lot of sweetness. Again, not getting cotton candy, vanilla or caramel separately. It's just a lot of sweetness. And then it does have that slight, in the background, slight 540 vibe. Absolutely delicious, amazing. I've worn it so many times. It is also quite strong, so it doesn't look like I've worn it, but in the last month that I've had it, I've worn it many, many times. My daughter happens to love this fragrance as well. She has asked me to wear it quite a few times as well. So, uh, you know, even though this fragrance didn't get a lot of hype or a lot of positive reviews, for me, it's a definite, definite winner. Um, yeah, one of my uh, probably most used scents in the last month or so. So there you go. Uh, these are my unpopular opinions on some um, newer fragrances, let's say. Please share with me what do you think about these fragrances and what are your unpopular opinions. Thank you for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, please remember to give me a thumbs up, to subscribe and to comment, and I will see you soon in the next one. Bye.